But I know you want the heartbreak story. I really want to know. I know you want it. That's why I had to bring you out. <laughs> so that when you start crying, I'll, I'll, I'll just take the tears and add it to the down. There's a lot of crying that has already <laughs> happened here. Yeah? Oh, so really? There's a lot of tears of mine. I think this dam is probably full of my <laughs> tears. <laughs> but not only tears, mm. not only of sorrow. Um, there's a lot of tears of gratitude, of happiness. You know, the things that I've achieved that I didn't think I could achieve over the last three years. Would you say that the heartbreak changed you? A lot. Um, it showed me that, you know, I have more strength than I knew. I had to pull myself together. Like I said, I'm a mom, so I have two beautiful boys. Um, they needed me. Who broke your heart? Who broke my heart? My name is Michelle Gwatimba. I'm 35 years old and I'm a commercial farmer in Zimbabwe. On our farm, we are on 150 hectares. We concentrate on mostly grains, legumes, and very recently we started and ventured out on horticulture. Um, there's beauty in farming. There's beauty in seeing something going from nothing to something. Um, I think it's more, especially as a woman, you can relate more, mm. especially if you've had children, because I have children. So you can relate from literally starting from seed to then something sprouting into something you can see, you can touch, and obviously you can sell for profits. <laughs> Are you making money? Um, truth be told, we, because we've been doing this for three years, um, the first two years were hard, um, inception, because when we did come, when I did come on this farm, there mm. wasn't any much going on. So a lot of our resources have gone into clearing land, mm. um, putting up infrastructure, and we've also had a lot of trial and errors. But wow. finally, um, we see the results. We've finally started seeing profits. Hmm. And yes. Now that you're seeing profit, does it mean that um, it's capital intensive from the start? It's not as capital intensive anymore. Because the bigger things like the water, um, um, the water pumps, we've already acquired those. So now we c our projects are not as capital intensive as they were the first two years. Tell me something about yourself. Who are you? I'm Michelle Guatimba. Born and raised in Harare. Um, went to school at the Dominican convent in Harare for high school. Um, and in a place called Mutari for A-levels. And then went off to Malaysia. Oh wow, you lived in Asia too? Yeah. For How long did you stay there? Three and a half years. Um, I did my Bachelor of Science in Business Information Systems. And you ended up in <laughs> some! What, what happened? I don't know. I grew green fingers. I grew green fingers. I like working with my hands. Like I said, I wasn't happy with computers. Um, I literally realized that computers were not for me like a year into the degree. But you know, your parents, our parents had put so much. And we decided, like, you know what, I'm just going to finish it. But at that time, I, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Because for the longest time, I'm that child who, when people ask me when I was young, like, what do you want to do? One day I wanted to be a lawyer. The next day I wanted to be a policeman. The next day I wanted to be a dancer. I was never sure. Um, of what but I wanted to Can I ask you a question? So, but uh -huh. you, you never thought that one day you'd be a farmer? No. Why? It's just, it's not a thought that ever crossed my mind. Because in Africa we think farmers are poor people. No, my father was actually a farmer before me. But it's not a career path that I thought I would follow. Do you understand? But he didn't, he did it um, as extracurricular activity so it's not something that it was like instilled in my head that you know what this is going to be something that i'm going to do for probably the rest of my life no it just never never dawned on me never thought about it never discussed but i i heard that zimbabwe's economy relies on farming you didn't know that before i can explain it we used to be the breadbasket of Africa. We we're on our way, of Southern Africa actually, but we we're on our way back to being the breadbasket of Southern Africa. But there's a lot that has happened. There's a lot of regime change that has happened over the past 20 years. So from being the time that we did grow up and into adulthood, mm. um, there's a lot of instability, if I may say so. So we never thought, I don't think we ever thought our economy would go back to agriculture. <music> How much will you sell a cabbage? And because it's wholesale, I think we're looking at maybe a dollar for four, a dollar for five. Um, obviously, depending on the size, once it's time to sell. But yeah, that's the range. Yeah. Wow. 
you have 32,000 of them. Yeah, 32,000. So which means you're making $32,000? Um, no. We're actually probably going to make around $6,000. $6,000? Yes, because $1, we're saying it would sell maybe four or five oh, cabbages. Oh, four or five cabbages. Yeah, I yeah. thought it's one yeah. for so one So from this lot, we're looking at about $6,000. Um, the setup amount that we've used so far, I think mm. until the project is done, we're looking at nearly $3,000. So a profit just of over. so a profit of about I said profit our profit margin that we're working with is two thousand five hundred dollars, but you see this is on one hectare. I have one hundred and fifty hectares, <laughs> <laughs> so obviously it's not we're not going to have the same crops and profit margins yeah. are different, um, but yeah, you asked if it's lucrative, quite. What really inspired your farming journey? It's. Three things. One, a very personal heartbreak. <laughs> no, um, I no, 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 don't jump on to that question. Who broke your heart? Who broke my heart? Um, Someone. It was a series of events. Wait, I know you want the heartbreak story. I really want to know. I know you want to. That's why I had to bring you on the side. <laughs> so that when That's you start crying, I'll, I'll, I'll just take the tears and add it to the down. There's a lot of crying that has already <laughs> happened here. Oh, so really? There's a lot of tears of mine. I think this dam is probably full of my <laughs> tears. <laughs> but not only tears, mm. not only of sorrow. Um, there's a lot of tears of gratitude, of happiness. You know, the things that I've achieved that I didn't think I could achieve over the last three years. So, yeah, so... All sorts of emotions have been so experienced here. Before the heartbreak, you never had a farm? No, the farm belonged, like I said, um, it belonged to my late dad. Mm. But when he passed away, there was mm. nothing going on here. Um, my mom has a, an office job and my siblings and I were overseas. And then I came back first. Um, then they came in um, to Zimbabwe, but most of my siblings are still overseas anyway. Mm. So there was no operation going on here until we got here. Would this, would, this, would this say that the heartbreak changed you? A lot. Um, it showed me that, you know, I have more strength than I knew. I had to pull myself together. Like I said, I'm a mom, so I have two beautiful boys. Um, they needed me and I needed to pull myself together and I needed to sort myself out mm. and, you know, carry on for them. I have a beautiful mom, a single mom, because, yeah, now that my dad is late, you know, she needs me as well. My siblings needed me. Mm. Um, so I needed to pull myself together, mm. work hard and, yeah, carry on, which I did. Well, I, don't, I don't think, you still think about those days anymore. You've moved on. No, no, I've moved on. Ah, no. Those days, if I was to talk about it, I would cry. You That's understand? why I brought you here. Yeah, no, 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 there's no crying no here. No more crying. No. I think we should have done that in the farm. No, <laughs> no, no, there's no crying. Um, there's a lot that's happened. Mm. There's a lot of growth. Like, mm. you see, right now we're sitting on this pump. I love this pump. I'm actually here to give it a name because I give everything names. Um, it's a 100, horse, 100 horsepower pump. It carries water to the center pivot. Um, the one we, we passed on our way here. Um, so we've just put it put this in this year. Mm -hmm. um, we've only done one cycle, one season of the sugar beans. Um, we should start. We're starting land prep for potatoes next week. Mm -hmm. So in August we are planting potatoes. So there's big things going on. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. And I think we need more hard breaks in, in the system because when you have more hard breaks in the system, we have more farmers. <music> A lot of disappointments. So I needed, I needed an escape. Um, that was one of the things that brought me here. Secondly is, um, my father passed away um, 13 years ago now. And I have always knew that I was the legacy holder. So everything he did, I wanted to carry on. And one of his passions was the farm. Um, so when we were younger, we had a smaller farm in a place called Shamba. Um, but as he did well, he finally got this one from land reform. Um, from the government but he didn't get a chance to farm on it he only did one season but he was already not feeling well and the next year he passed away um so because i really wanted my father's legacy to carry on um not only with the farming even with some of his other businesses and enterprises that he had um but yeah my passion then came here 
the third one i know you want me to go back to the first one but the first one is done <laughs> the third one i think i've always had an urge to help people but what better way to help people than to feed the nation there's no better way you understand everything starts with agriculture everything starts with food production and then we carry on so with 32,000 cabbages hypothetically speaking if we have 10 people eating one cabbage and feeding 320,000 people from one small patch of land That's so amazing. yeah if you look at it that way so I really I, um, I love my people I love my country um, but are you it's doing the way to contribute are you doing this alone yes um, um, hands on mm. I'm alone I have family who have helped a lot in financing my siblings and my brothers in love my brother in love actually um, my mom because obviously she's the owner of the land and she comes here a lot with me um, but hands-on and more technically it's me and yeah mr. Mazon I think you saw him who's um, our manager who we've brought on who works his magic because he has more know-how because I'm not I'm not qualified. I have no, <laughs> I have no edu agricultural education. <laughs> I have passion. Okay. So I have passion. But, and I have but are, you, are you learning from the job? No, no, no. I'm learning. Like I can do this, like now. But before, if you like, I knew I wanted to. What happens is I always have these ideas. Like, no, I'm thinking let's do cabbages, and I do a lot of research. And obviously, with the internet these days, you can. But hands-on practical you always need somebody who has that know-how because you know not only do we do this we're also doing tobacco i think you saw the field that's the one that we've cleared mm. um we started tobacco last season we tried just on a small on two hectares it did so well so we are looking into doing between five to seven hectares wow. and just grow it um as we go along so the tobacco i'm learning um with the maize which you saw which is in the field as well mm. i i can do maize in my sleep like I, I know, I know my maze. <laughs> you're trying I to know tell, my you're maze. You're trying to tell us that you're a pro. I know. You're a pro yes, when I'm, it comes to maze. I'm a pro. <laughs> Michelle is telling me that you are the one doing everything. Yes, please. I'm the one who's doing all these things. Wow. Yes. It, it seems you have a lot of experience in farming. Yes, I have quite, I have quite a lot of experience. How long have you been farming? I've been in the farming sector for at least, uh, it's now 38 years. Wow! So I'm just a farm guy. A farm guy? Do you have your own farm? Uh, at the moment I don't have a farm. My father was working on the farm. Okay, so yes. you're working with your dad on the farm? Yeah, that's right. Wow, so now you manage this farm? Yeah, I'm managing Michelle's farm right now. I, I want to ask you a question, yeah. <music> 30 years experience in farming. Yeah. What are the major challenges that you faced? Mostly, um, like right now, the most challenge we are facing now is um, some farming inputs, equipment to use on the farm, and uh, the most one is uh, the stalling of uh, some uh, transformers. So that's a major challenge which are... There's still transformers here? Yeah, they are stealing some, from, some, some transformers if you don't put some guard there. So if they steal those transformers, it's a major challenge. You don't farm, you don't, you don't do anything, you don't irrigate. The Zimbabwe experienced drought recently. Yes. There was no rain in yes. Zimbabwe. Yes. Did that affect farming in Zimbabwe? Yes, yes please. So what, what were you guys doing to change that? Then? Yeah, we were uh, on that uh, 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 dress spell which came, we are experienced on irrigation mostly okay. so you don't wait for i mean for the rains we are just going on i mean doing the irrigation that's why i said earlier on that uh, we are having a challenge of our uh, some uh, transformers yeah. being stolen because that's so, the transformer you're going to use to pump the to water. water to the i mean to the land the advice to those who are now starting farming they should be eager on what they are doing they should not play if they get those farms. They should, uh, they should do, um, uh, 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 see what crops they can, uh, I mean, plant, so that uh, uh, they, uh, they can get into the proper farming. Hmm. Yeah. They don't just say we are going to farm, or they farm things which are just useless. They can farm things which can be 
I mean, which can uh, feed the nation. You say when you say feed the nation, which means you don't believe in farming and exporting. Yeah, we, 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 can, we can do the farming and do the exporting, but uh, we need uh, also to feed our, our nation. Our people. Yes. I don't think the only purpose of this water is to, for you to come and sit here and cry. No, 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 no. This is our water source. <laughs> for irrigation purposes? Yes, for irrigation. So all I can say is <laughs> we're not waiting for the rain like in the rest of Africa. We're actually irrigating. Okay. There's a new facility we put in this year, okay. at the beginning of this year. Um, we have, this is the control box. Oh, wow. It controls, obviously, takes electricity from there. Um, a lot of gibberish happens inside here where the magic happens. It pushes an instruction to the pump and then the pump pumps water from there right through here. Um, this is where our main line begins. Um, underground, we have an underground main line hmm. that travels for about two kilometers, I think. You wow. notice that it's quite yeah, far. Yeah. So yeah, we're taking water from about two kilometers away. So yeah, so all the water for the pivot is all taken from here. Hmm. Um, I think it's a 90 inch main line underground all the way for two kilometers. Is this dam natural or it's mermaid? I think it's a natural dam, but the, a lot of modifications were, were made to it. not this for use for salsa? Yeah, this is what we use for salsa. So you, you're planting then you sell it to people who make salsa or you're going to make the salsa yourself? Well, all the maize of the country for goes what? to the government. All the maize that we grow. Because for, for food it's for, security it's reasons. For, it's for the government. We sell it to the government. To the government? Yeah. But do you know that government prices are always not good? They are not. But Sell it to me. No, I'm patriotic. Hey! I'm patriotic. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> okay. But, but why? Is it a law for you to sell your maize to the government? Yes. Hmm. For food security reasons. Um, to feed the nation? To feed the nation. That's amazing. Yeah. But also because we are funded, like with me. Um, I'm funded, I'm government funded for, these, for this particular project. Oh, for the maize project? For the maize. Yeah. The government gave you money? Not money, they give us inputs. So they'll give us the seed, they'll give us the fuel, they'll give us the chemicals. Um, but they'll obviously charge us. And then once I harvest, which when once we've harvested this, we deliver. Um, they take whatever tonnage covers um, the loan, mm. and then the rest of it they pay pay me out. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's more like they're giving you a loan. Yeah. It's a, it's, yeah. You pay back the loan. Yeah. Once the season is over. You know, Zimbabwe used to be the food basket of Africa. Yes, it did. Of Southern Africa, yes. Southern Africa. Uh -huh. It used to be. Yeah, it used to which be. Which means now it's not. No, it's not, but we're on our way back there. What measurement do you think the government can do to bring that back? I think what they're on the right track. Finally, they are supporting agriculture, especially because before um, Zimbabweans, black Zimbabweans anyway, were communal farmers. Mm. They were doing small plots of land just to feed their families, but now we get a lot of government assistance to do bigger projects. So once we have access, do you understand? Now we can then export to other other countries. We've come a long way. We, we really have. Um, we're not at a point of exporting yet, but I think in the next few years, if we carry on the way we're going, I think we're on the right track. Yeah. The biggest challenge, uh -huh. access to these loans. Um, access to loans, access to inputs, um, I think it's, I don't think it's a Zimbabwean problem. I think it's an African no problem. problem because our leaders are not investing in agriculture. Like, look at it this way. Um, right now, there's two crises that has just happened the last two years. We've got the Russia-Ukraine war mm -hmm. and we've got COVID. COVID. Both crises have had a huge impact on food security all over the world. But we have vast pieces of land and this is our time to capitalize if our governments were to give us enough funding to not only do projects where we can feed our nation, but also to do things that we can export our excess. So I think that the gold rush now should actually be more land. People should rush to get land because with Ukraine and Russia down, I'm not really sure of the statistics, but we know Ukraine and Russia have fed so much, nearly the majority of Europe. But, but I don't think Ukraine Russian war should affect us in Africa. No, it doesn't affect us, but it, it creates an opportunity. 
we can now export food food products to Europe to anywhere else do you understand yeah. like I think most of the wheat in Europe was from Russia but now we have an opportunity because look I know you, you are suffering with the cold in Zimbabwe <laughs> but you know we do a lot of wheat unfortunately I have I didn't do wheat this year but we that was, in marijuana wheat wheat for bread <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, at the moment we have 27 left. Um, we've grown our herd to nearly 40 at some point. Um, but what we do with the cattle is we pen fatten. So once they are of age, we put them in pens for about 70 to 90 days. We feed them on food that's highly nutritious and we sell them out for beef um, wow. to, to slaughterhouses. It, it's more like doing mixed farming in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does it mean I use the same manure for your crops? We use the manure from the cattle in the gardens for the vegetables. And we've also tried, um, last year we actually tried to use some of the manure in, uh, in a patch of maize. Mm. It did very well. But the thing is, it's so labor intensive and we don't get enough manure, like now that we are doing such a huge hectare, mm. we don't have enough manure to put on to 20 hectares. Wow. But we do, we are using the manure for that. Yeah. But is the cattle business profitable? It is. Um, it covers our costs when we need to. Um, it's, I can say it's, easy, it's readily available cash. Like for example, if we need money, to, for the day-to-day -day runnings, because obviously, you know, with things like maize, um, it's eight months that you have to wait, 10 months. Um, same with tobacco. Yeah. But yet for, for um, the cattle, if we pin fat for about 70 days, then we sell. Wow. Um, and yeah. What are they doing? Um, we're grading sugar beans. Um, it's seed sugar beans, um, so it needs to be graded. It's on contract, we grade on contract for a local company that then treats it and sell, sells it off as seed. Um, so what, when it comes out of the field, it needs to be graded. Um, the beans that are going to go into seed, they take out um, the dirty ones, the spoiled ones, and leave just, um, just the clean ones that can go off for, for seed. They are permanent workers? Um, majority are. Majority are. We do take um, some um, workers when we have lots of work like right now. Um, we're trying very hard to employ as many women as we can, especially for the lighter work, which is like the grading. Because, you know, they also deserve to be employed. Yeah. Um, it's not only laborious um, work that we have here on the farm. Makadini? Wow. It's like they didn't understand me, eh? Ah, is that ma Makadini? Ma yes, Makadini. Oh, just... ma Makadini. <laughs> ah, ah. <laughs> so yeah. what is the final product after them? The final product, let me show you it here. So you sell the, this to the company? Yeah, the company we, we 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 will deliver. We will deliver this for seed. Let me ask you my final question. Yeah. Do, do you think agriculture is the future? It's the present and the future. Because if people are not eating, then people will relinquish to live. People need to be fed. Um, so how how do we how do we operate without agriculture? What are you going to um, tell young entrepreneurs who are looking forward to venture into agriculture based on your experience? It's not as hard as people think, you understand. Um, it's unfortunate that you guys have come in maybe in winter when we don't have a lot of work. It's not like we're going into the farm with holes. We use a lot of machinery. Um, it has evolved from the way that maybe our forefathers used to do it. It's more about smart farming, um, smart partnerships. And you do partner with some people who have more know-how than you. Um, it's not as, as capital intensive as maybe you'd expect. Like I think I explained to you with the maize, we, it is for the government, so we are contracted with them. We have a contractor for the sugar beans. Um, so you need, to, you need to make smart decisions. Mm. Yeah. If you hear the name Africa, what comes into your mind? Who oh, beauty, melamine, um, royalty. 
royalty and everything in between. Because we are royalty, you know, um, we all come from households. We are from Ghana. There is, you especially know there's royalty here in Zimbabwe. We also come, I'm, I always tell people I'm a Rosary princess, you know, because I come from a clan called Rosary. So we need to now hold ourselves with such esteem, mm. you understand, and know that we don't always have to be the followers, we don't always have to, to be in the shadows. Not everything terrible is associated with Africa. Africa. Yes, and this is our time to rise. There's so many Africans watching us right now. If you have a message for Africans, what would that message be? Let's be true to who we are, um, to where we come from. Let's carry that no matter where we go, either we go to any other continent, let's, let's have pride, let's have African pride. I think that's the biggest thing. And if you had a chance to change one thing in Zimbabwe, what will it be? There's not much I would change. I love the people here. Um, I love our weather, even though maybe winter. So, you know, like I said, I I'm very like patriotic. That. You don't like the weather, we know. Nah. You, you've struggled with nah. the cold. So, there's not, there's not much I would change. It's home, it's what I know, and it's what I love. To her, Zimbabwe <laughs> is perfect. Quite, <laughs> on our way, <laughs> oh. to perfection. <laughs> I have no idea about that, by the way. But we're on our way, we're on our way. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to tell you guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, you can leave a comment as the... As the... <laughs> Help me! <laughs> I'm not, I'm not saying Help it. Me. I'm not saying it. They're working on my house. Oh, they're mine.